Hello everyone, so I'm Yuan. So uh, this particular section will be on the principles on toxical dynamics and toxical kinetics. Uh, so bear in mind this is actually not for toxicology students because um, the information here is for pharmacy school students whereby we only give a very brief introduction of this concept uh, which is supposed, uh, in actual fact, the class will be about an hour an hour actually. So the concepts that we talk about here is actually a very brief one. Uh, but bear in mind that the concepts of toxical dynamics and toxical kinetics is very similar to pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. So therefore a lot of concepts I'll, I'll just brief through, browse or fly through because the details can be found in the respective pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics classes. So in the whole uh, topic of toxicology, you have to understand that it has different phases. So uh, do remember this diagram in a way. So you've got the research part, you need to know what to study. And you have to have certain risk assessment. And then from there, you have to manage it. So therefore, you, have, you may have some uh, regulatory decisions as well based on this. So that it can prevent uh, the next environmental toxicity from happening. So there's risk assessment. So you can see this is using a, one of an example for the risk assessment workflow. So for example, determine the, the level of microorganism in the water. So you have to have a dose response assessment, exposure, therefore, and then overall managing the risk and any intervention that you want to do. Right. So bear in mind, toxicity or toxicology is a big, big topic on its own. Uh, this is... Uh, it's very obvious when you look at the, the thickness of the textbooks that's been used. So like for pharmacists, we look at BNF and all, it's like the Bible and the toxicology has its own Bible as well. So uh, we're just going to talk through very basic concepts of all this. So, and bear in mind, all these are quite similar to the pharmacology concepts as well. Right, so there's few textbooks that we're going to use uh, to prepare the materials over here. Okay, so for this slide, we actually look at uh, the different types of toxicity testing that you actually need to do. So bear in mind, the whole thing is about a lot of concept-based. So uh, there's a lot of information that you can self-read because it's pretty straightforward. Right, so for this one, um, we actually look at an uh, example of acute toxicity. So meaning what happens in a very short period of time. So how do you actually study it? So we need to know the toxical kinetics, how fast it can kick in. So any short-term test to know whether how, what is the effect of toxicity maybe it affects the liver, the kidneys, the brain and so on and so forth and is, is there any uh, other genotoxicity indicator so uh, what you need to do about it uh, maybe there's damage on the DNA and things like that so how do you evaluate so some of it you, it, it can be no toxic, no genotoxicity right and so you, you don't need any uh, lifetime study because bear in mind a lot of things uh, they are not toxic because you just you are being exposed to just one time but you might need multiple exposures right so the multiple exposures would be in the second case like the repeated dose study so it can be uh, someone who's exposed to tiny doses but every day for example and you have to look at the potential for the whole lifelong right so um there's different toxicity testings, right, uh, which is covered by your assignment actually. Right, so what are the undesirable effects that you want to that could possibly happen when a person takes a drug? So again, these are very, very straightforward concepts. So the later few slides will be all the wordings for it as well. So it can be allergic reaction. So allergic can be allergic to anything literally so it depends on the person like some person for example some person are uh, allergy to peanuts for example but others are fine you can still eat peanut butter jam like crazy right so uh, idiosyncratic is always it's a term where you describe um, things that you don't really know why on earth it happens so uh, in my terms I always say that it's actually like as if we are idiots so it becomes an idiosyncratic reaction we don't really know what happened uh, but it happened <laughs> right so uh, some effects are immediate some are delayed some are reversible some are irreversible obviously the irreversible ones are the ones that you need to be careful of because you cannot stop uh, cannot reverse the, the effects of the toxicity even though you stop the drug and some are localized 
uh, some are systemic, so meaning systemic, the whole body will experience the toxicity effects. What do they mean? So you can just read through the text. So I won't go through it over here because they're very, very straightforward. So all this information is from the big textbook that I talk about, the green one in the reference. Right, so toxicodynamic, there's a few concepts. So um, you can check through the handouts. I'll load upload the handouts as well. So they can be physiological changes. It can be functional. It can be molecular. See, molecular refers to what's happening within within the cells per se. Functional meaning after it's exposed, how it can it affect the function? So physiological is a more general um, change. So these are all quite, sometimes it's quite overlapping anyway. Right. So uh, remember, toxicodynamic concepts are uh, the same as pharmacodynamics because it's just that we change the word pharmaco to toxico just to emphasize that it's something toxic. So the same thing you see dose response curve. So remember the dose response is a curve, it's not a line. So please do not use your ruler to draw the line in the center. Uh, obviously this time the exam will be online ish so you won't have such an issue because always every year I'll get someone who actually a bit maybe a bit OCD who tries to use the ruler to draw the center line but because it's not really a a straight line actually so um so what values can you give it so instead of ec50 you got values like uh, ld50 td50 and things like that so again if the therapeutic index is high so again your safety level will be greater right so uh, again just to um, remind you so for example this is one of the dose response curves so you can go if if you can see at Emax and you got your percentage response that reflects the potency. So what does it mean in terms of toxicology? So again, you see the same dose response curves, but we actually changed the term to LD, which refers to little dose. So it can be the dose that can cause lethality, meaning death, isn't it? So it can be uh, LD10, so lethality of 10%, LD50, 50% of the, the, the samples will be bye-bye, right? Because probably you'd be testing it in mice, for example, and things like that. So, or in cells. So, these are the different terms that you'd be used, but the concept is exactly the same. So, basically, it's EC50, but changed to LD50, right? So, which is more potent. So, again, the smaller the value, so the more potent the toxicant is, right? So, uh, again, for this one, it's the same. Again, the more uh, smaller value, so it become more toxic in a way. Right, so this one you can you can say it depends on which value you're comparing with. So maybe at smaller doses, one is more toxic uh, easily, right? Uh, but at uh, at EC fifty ID TD fifty uh, toxicant A is actually more toxic, right? So um, depends on which dose range that you're looking. at. So combining different curves, you can actually get a uh, like IE like therapeutic index kind of concept. So this one you actually look at SD, so it's sentinel response. So you've got toxic dose response and you've got lethal dose. Obviously, lethal is the one that needs a higher concentration, isn't it? So uh, instead of therapeutic index stuff, you can get like margin of safety and things like that. So again, you just divide the values accordingly. Right, so there are some terminology which is very specific to toxicology, so which is all the OL, OL stuff. So you actually have some curve like over here, like the dose response, but obviously most of the time, we don't want any, even TD10 to happen, isn't it? We don't want 10% of your samples to even be dead because we're looking at things that maybe like, um, for example, a new preservative in your food and things which you don't want any toxic to happen at all. Right, so we are looking at doses which are really, really low at the uh, lower part of the curve. So they've got some terms like NOEL, like LOEL, OEL. <laughs> right, so you've got norm observable effect, lowest observable effect, you've got occupational exposure effect. Uh, level you've got uh, ADI for example acceptable daily intake margin of exposure margin of safety so these are the terms that uh, you can go and find out what what they, they mean in uh, further terms right so go and find out okay right so uh, there's also threshold dose so you can see there's a the you just is your OL just now and this is your NOEL so you, there's actually a, a control a center one which is a zero equivalent point as well uh, details of this go read up through the book because uh, these are terms which are very specific to toxicology, right? So as mentioned the earlier dose, it might be safe and then later on there will be a, a response that meaning at the ZP which is the same response as the control, meaning that's nothing happened. So anything below it will be safe because obviously you want to recommend people a much safer dose so you normally recommend a lower one rather than recommend the exact value. Right, so how do you calculate ADI, your acceptable daily intake? So 
it's actually an estimation uh, because you estimate probably your ADI probably mainly if it's from food so you got 90% of it you've got air and you've got drinking water and you've got uh, the Noel basically you have to times the effect the effect of your Noel and sorry divide the effect of the Noel of animal and divide the effect of Noel on humans so animals is uh, divide by 100 because 10 depends on uh, species difference and things like that so they put another 10 so Noel for humans because again you want to make the value as small as possible to keep everyone safe right so and then you times both of the values together you get ADI right <clears throat> right so that's your toxical kinetics let's move on so again uh, toxical kinetics is the, exactly the same concept as pharmacode kinetics as well it's exactly exactly the same you've got the same ADME but probably the ADME will be different again based on different toxicants that you're looking at it so uh, the main root, uh, roots of ex, uh, absorption what are the examples everything's exactly the same what are the factors that influence the absorption how lipophilic it is everything is exactly exactly the same right so um again uh, you've got transporters efflux flux everything's exactly the same i'm just flying through all the slides because you've already seen the explanation previously so a uh, set of distribution so this one is just to see the different nutrients so um, or different things that so if your toxicant mimics all these nutrients um what you call the structure then you can actually follow a little bit on where it can be absorbed together so this is just to show you fyi right so again, you've got distribution, metabolism, excretion, right? So bear in mind, there's a lot of things that we actually don't really know how to get rid of it from the body, literally, because there's a lot of uh, interesting things that you can use as a toxicant, right? So for example, that, um, like the solution that you can use to process your photofilm, for example. So these are all weird things, but again... If someone wants to suicide, they can literally drink everything. But again, disclaimer, the sun is bright. Rainbow will still appear. So please don't do stupid stuff. Right? So yeah, you just have to wait sometimes. The rainbow will appear. Sorry, this is a disclaimer that I have to mention every time when I say something. <laughs> Sorry, actually in the class, I will actually mention more. But because this is a slide, so better be a bit more cautious since I'm up uploading to a public platform. Right, so uh, like for example, a famous toxicant that we're looking at, uh, uh, there's something that we actually managed to do something about it. Is, for example, there's certain substance in the paint. So just give a story, uh, probably I mentioned it earlier on. So uh, that's, a, that's how normally things are, whereby uh, there'll be epidemiologists who actually looks at it. Uh, so if there's certain disease, right, it's more prevalent in certain subgroups of occupation, for example, or certain groups of people, then they'll investigate what are the things that they are ex probably exposed to so which may cause the effects so for example there's certain uh, Chinese herbs that one very very rarely used it's already been banned but sometimes don't know why it still appears so it's like for example it's called aristolocate acid it can specifically cause a certain signature of cancer for um Uretidal cancer, so it's almost like a confirmed relationship. So then we'll try to do something by banning it. So similar, like if there's something that they cause, uh, they know that uh, years ago there's a group of painters who are ex who are getting certain types of cancer because then they realize that it's from the paint substance, right? So then they change the formula of the paint, so therefore you remove the risk for people. So again, this uh again shows the full process. So again, it's being absorbed. So it can be detox, i.e. your biotransformation by the liver, and then to transform it, it can be from toxic or non-toxic metabolites, which then cause your pharmacological or pathological effect. And again, bear in mind, there's always a repair process, attempt to repair process by the body, but how successful is it? So it depends on what's the damage being so there are some parameters of toxicokinetic, so that's a bit of half-life, everything is exactly the same. So there will be some variations between the predicted and observed values, right? So why do you need to do these values? Because uh, we're mainly looking at those acute cases because we're pharmacists, isn't it? So for example, if someone comes in with whatever drug toxicity, so again, you have to try to predict, like for example, when is the dose being taken, so or how much is being taken, so you know, for example, there are things that have antidote, how much antidote you need, they need to put into the patient as an initial start, right? Or, um, or what you should do at the moment, how is the 
for example absorption profile has the thing if it's being taken more than half a day for example so there's no use to actually for you to clear or wash the stomach things like because probably it's being absorbed into the blood circulation already what should you do next and things like that so uh, there could be some variations between your predicted right and also observed value meaning the actual value it can be over prediction so it can be the time frame is wrong right so the sampling is different right and it can be over prediction right so um it can be so sometimes it, because you're using an average population parameter and it can be under prediction for example again your history taking is is, is wrong in a way right it's inaccurate so it can be alterations right it can be under predictions and things like that so different there's different issues that can be involved right so how do you use your knowledge so for some stuff there's actually something called nomogram so nomogram as you can see here so this is for one of the drugs called theophylline so theophylline is actually a drug which is commonly used to treat asthma and copd like uh, chronic pulmonary uh COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease right so um, you can see actually there's different profiles between non-smokers and smokers so you can see for non-smokers actually the concentration can go actually much higher but for smokers it's all like uh, increased metabolization so the concentration is much lower right so you can see um, in case there's state cases of toxicity what should you do and what is the predicted uh, concentration that uh, that could have kicked in in the body Right, so similar for acetaminophen, which is a more common name for a paracetamol. So again, you can actually, from the graph, you can predict whether is it uh, likely to be toxicity, right? So um, if it's above it, then probably you have to give in the antidote. If not, then probably you can just wait for time and just hy um, hydrate the patient and just leave it and the person will self-heal. Right, so again, that's something you can use. So how to reduce toxicity? So first thing is uh, depends on which part of ADME they're looking at. So it's, if it's before A, so again, anything you try to catch at A, isn't it? So if it's, it will be much easier. So if it's before absorption, so you try to clear up from the stomach and things like that, or give them an activated charcoal to bind to the toxic substance so that it doesn't be absorbed, right? So or just clear the whole system up irrigation right or you can use a specific antidote right if it's already in the body so you can't really change much of the metabolism right so it can may try to maybe change a little bit of the e to increase the e out of the body so it can be a little diuresis hemodiasis so again depends on what drug is it so again you can actually check uh, micromedex and things like because again every drug has its own treatment more effective treatment uh, process that you can do so this is again a uh, general chart a more organized chart to show what you can do right in terms of a toxic event right so um, based on the different profiles of the toxicants so it can also be divided into different mortality risks so meaning how toxic or how dangerous the thing is so it can be very high toxicity so uh, the person could be dead very easily and some are not so right so again, there's a pattern of mortality risk. So the lower it is, obviously, the better it is. So meaning it is, you can overdose, but most likely the person won't die. Okay, so the tax will be all over here. right? So again, there's also, bear in mind, there's a lot of variability in toxic response. Because, like, for example, some uh, children spend more time on the floor, like occupation, because there's multiple exposure, right, as asthma, or, sorry, asthma about smoking and things like that. Or liver people with already predisposing liver uh, damage, then they'll be more uh, prone for liver function. Uh, drugs that can cause uh, further liver damage, they'll, they'll be more susceptible to it. So there's a lot of um, variability, right? Depends on the substance you're looking at. So you can see, so these are the sub topics that uh, you should have sort of roughly know because again, it's a very similar to pharmacokinetics and dynamics. So it's exactly so this is just a reminder of all the things that you should and could have known already by now so there's a little bit of uh, toxicogenetics and genomics so because again uh, remember geno genomics and genetics uh, it's a popular field so again toxicology also embark on the journey as well so we try to correlate something called polymorphism right so um, so again, again you can see some people they are more uh, susceptible towards certain things so even though they are exposed at a similar level right so uh, this is just a reminder that um, yes uh, you can get cancers from heteroamines and things so this is 
Um, so the amines and all, they're mainly from uh, burned food. So imagine if you go for barbecue, um, actually depends on how burned the food is. We actually determine how high is your cancer risk. <laughs> right, so pharmaco uh, toxicogenomics, sorry. So you can actually somehow, they uh, mainly study obviously on mice first. So it's a very simple uh, flow that you can actually... Um, actually process the samples, right, and hybridize, and then in the end, you actually study uh, the, 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 what you call the gene expression profile, which genes are more, which proteins is produced more, which are lesser and things. So again, you've got bioinformatics now. This, this is all just for information, right? I don't need you to memorize the whole process anyway. Right, so we've got, then overall, you come out a chart to show that uh, which, of the proteins are upregulated, or which genes are upregulated, and which genes are downregulated. So the upregulated would be the green color ones, the black ones would be the one that has no change, right? Uh, the red ones would be have the wool dose that goes down. So, um, so again, this is just for information. So just a little bit of exposure on how actually bioinformatics and all fit into the field of toxicology. So this is again another chart to show the whole thing. So, um, and this is something that you probably learn in different classes already, so I didn't want to go through so much about it. So again, this is about acetaminophen, which is your paracetamol. So if you are taking at the normal doses, i.e. non-toxic doses, so you're actually looking at, um, there's even endogenous glutathione, right, which is in the body, so like uh, the S, the sulfurish group in the body, right, so we can actually uh, snatch up all the, like i.e. like neutralizing all the reactive intermediates and get it out from the urine to be cleared right but however if there's too high concentration so there'll be there's not enough of endogenous glutathione to support the whole system so there'll be excess of uh, reactive intermediates to can to then damage the liver directly so if there's how do you treat in these cases of O toxicity? So you put in an exogenous N acetylcysteine, which acts like the function of glutathione to then bind to all the reactive intermediates. Right? That's all for the toxicology class. So do find out some of the information if you're interested. See you soon. Tada! Stay safe. Happy revision.